Let's walk through just some of the basics of the MDX query language. MDX is, a, I think, a very logical language. It's a little heavy on the syntax some of the times when you kind of start really getting into writing complex queries. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it's it, it somewhat reminds me of XML in the verbosity, the number of characters that you have to write to actually accomplish something. However, the flexibility of it and the uh, the way you can pretty much get anything that you want uh, is excellent. You're going to totally dig it if you like writing Transact SQL. And it's really not that hard to learn the basics of it. Now, if, if you are watching this in order in the course, you're great. If, however, you've jumped to this video without watching the previous videos in this course, let me just kind of give you maybe something that you would need to have happen if you want to follow along. I am going to be using the samples for AdventureWorks 2012. Okay, so you need to have, if you want to follow along, the AdventureWorks 2012 multi-dimensional models installed on your SSAS multi-dimensional mode instance. Okay, so you need to have that done already. We, if you're watching the course, we just did that. We just installed the samples, we installed the data warehouse, uh, built the samples with SQL Server data tools. But just in case you're watching these uh, out of order, that's what you need, okay? So you can get those at the CodePlex website, and I, it's something like sqlserversamples.codeplex.com or something, top SQL Server product sample, something like that, I can't remember. Uh, anyway, go to CodePlex, look up AdventureWorks 2012, you'll find it, okay? Or go watch the video on installing the AdventureWorks 2012 multidimensional samples. Okay, <laughs> that would probably be the easiest way. So um, we're going to practice our queries, and I think the easiest tool to start out with here is the Management Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and launch my SQL Server Management Studio. You could probably even call it Query Studio because it is our query writing tool. Um, and I'm going to hook up to my multi-dimensional mode analysis services instance. I actually have two instances. One is tabular, one is multi-dimensional. I'm hooking up to the multi-dimensional one now. Okay. And I really don't need this object explorer because I want to create a new query. However, just from the previous video, you can see that we were successful in installing the AdventureWorks 2012 multi-dimensional sample. And it does have our AdventureWorks cube that we want to play with. So let me just click the new query button. And when I click this new query, we are in a new MDX query. Notice the default extension of the file is MDX. So we're writing MDX here. Okay? Now this query window is somewhat buggy. It's not as fully, what's the right word? Uh, supported as the Transact SQL query is. However, it keeps getting better with each release. So let's just kind of talk about the basics here of the MDX query. First off, your comments are the same, okay? So this is a multi-line comment. And down here is a single line comment, okay? So I like that. There's a little bit of consistency between the two uh, languages, Transact SQL and MDX. Um, your basic format for the query language is still select from where. I dig it, pretty simple. You now though, you say from, and you put your cube, okay? So, well, the basics, let's, let's, those of you who actually know MDX, you realize that uh, we're not required to put the cube here. We can do perspectives and different things here, but for the basics, let's just keep this at the cube level. So now insert your cube name here. That's your from clause. Okay. Now we don't have to have a where clause. It is optional. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that for the time being. And you can actually use the little handy, it's almost like your own object explorer over here. No, you can't click X here to close that out. That closes your query window. So let's just go ahead and I like to do this with even transact SQL queries. I say select, then I bring the from and I can just do this. I can drag and drop. Now notice here's a big difference between Transact SQL and MDX. You do not use single quotes and double quotes here. We use brackets, okay? So this would fail if I were to just use this, okay? I put this in brackets. 
fair enough. So I've now decided which cube I'm going to be using. Now, I can start querying on my measures and my dimensions. Right. Now, as I suggested to you in the previous video, I think you want to go ahead and orient yourself to the particular measure group you're working with. So for this example, I'm going to choose the Internet Orders measure group. And when I choose this, notice it's still on all. The dimensions here are going to change. This is showing every dimension for the entire cube. Well, every dimension for the entire cube is not related to the Internet order count. So I just want to see the dimensions related to internet order count. And so I say internet orders and there's my measure, okay? So here we have up here. So now we say this, you put your set in here, you say, so okay, select your measures on columns. Now zero is acceptable here as well. So you'll see that as well, okay? So let's just do that. I just wanna show you what we would do here. So I can take it and I just drag, okay? And I go ahead and I put it in my little curly braces. I'm defining a set with the curly braces, okay? Just like mathematics, on columns. And I can actually run this query. This is a sufficient MDX query. And, oops, I hit the new query window, didn't I? <laughs> uh, sorry, hit execute. And sure enough, it runs this and shows a single result set, okay? It shows that the total number of internet orders for the entire cube, regardless of dimension, is 27,659, okay? Awesome. Turns out that in my measure group internet orders, I only have a single measure. However, if I had additional measures, I could just simply separate them by commas, okay? And we could put in the new one. Now notice the syntax here. We have to explicitly say, I want a measure, measures dot. And then you simply, you don't have to reference your group. You say the name of the measure, internet order count. Sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to smudge it out uh, right there. Okay. So we've defined this as a column. Now we can further define it. Let's come up here and let's say now comma, we want to define our rows. Okay, so we're going to put in another set here on rows. Okay, so we'll just, I'm going to copy and paste and I'll leave this file with you here. We end these with a semicolon. If I leave off the semicolon, notice that I get a syntactical error. Well, I only get a syntax error if I'm running them in a batch. Golly, it's just a, a common thing. But if you don't want to get the error there, just put the semicolon to say this is the end of my statement. Okay. Now, on columns, I could have said, by the way, on zero. And when I say on zero, then that's going to be the exact same thing, this being axis zero. Okay. So your choice, whichever way you want to do that. Okay. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and put that right there. Now, let's add in some dimensions. So now, so this answers the question here, how many internet orders have we had? Okay. And if you remember from our previous video that internet order count was a distinct count when it hooked up to the data warehouse, okay? So now we want to change this up. Now we look at the dimensions related to the internet orders measures and we can start adding context to these numbers. I can say, you know what? I wanna see this uh, by calendar year, okay? So you see the calendar year? Well, I have a couple of options here. I can drill down and I can say, uh, I actually want to see calendar year. Now I need to put in my set identifier here, so curly braces, and I say on rows. And so now it says, hey, you have this many orders for each calendar year. Okay? And I know that these are members of the calendar year dimension because I see them in the drop down over here. Okay? Now you notice the nulls down here, we can actually remove those from the result set. You see this functions up here? We have a lot of different functions available to us in MDX, right? Just like you would in Excel or in Transact SQL or Access or whatever, right? So we can actually, let me just copy and paste, okay? We can use, I'll just pick one here, I'll say the non-empty. What do you think non-empty is going to do? It's going to say, show me only where the measure and the dimension meet and actually 
have an intersection. We have values here, okay? Now you can actually drag and drop and it will show you, or you can copy and paste and it will give you sort of an example syntax. So you paste the set in, you paste everything. These are our set identifiers, little brackets right here. So you put non-empty, open up your parentheses and just for uh, readability, I'm gonna spread it across multiple lines. You can totally, uh, just like in Transact SQL, you can use as much white space as you want. It doesn't give you a syntax error here. So I'm, I'm now changing my query to say, hey, I don't wanna see the null values anymore. So let's run this. And sure enough, the null values are no longer found. Okay. Um, let's see a couple of other basic stuff. Again, trying to keep this kind of high level just to give you the very basics here. Um, let's just do some slicers here. So I will, uh, I'm gonna go back to this one. And a slicer is your where clause. And if you remember, if I just run this, this gives me the entire internet order count for the entire cube. Or I can say, you know what, where? And now I'm going to filter. And what am I filtering on? I'm filtering on a dimensional value, okay? I could say where, look at that. You bring this in here. This is our member identifier. So I'm saying, find me the member 2005 and tell me what your internet order count is for 2005, okay? Now this is the exact same value we received up here, except for on axis one now, we don't have CY 2005, okay? We're just simply bringing back this one piece of information, okay? And we can filter it and say and quarter equal and do all kinds of things. I cannot, however, add it again in here. So I can't do this, this is, um, sorry. I can't say, you know what, I want to view it along axis one and also slice by it. It's going to say, no, nah, you, you already have that. Uh, you cannot use that same one okay, down here. So I can't kind of do both of those easily uh, here. Uh, and so pretty easy to kind of play with your slicers here. But there's a lot in here that you can play with. You can drill, you can grab hierarchies and work with. Uh, all the members of a dimension and very quickly come up with some pretty fancy MDX queries. But I think that for right now, the, the very basics that you need, you need to understand what on columns can do, what sets are, what rows are, and what your slicer can do. And I think you have that.